So they place me in box and ship me to King. Court in a freezing courthouse. It's very cold in there for one purpose, I believe. Uh, they don't seem to be able to get the temperature up. It shouldn't be that complicated, but we have a freezing courthouse, and that's fine. That's just fine. Uh, let them keep handing it out. This is a rigged trial. Thank you very much. Everybody. Wake up. Grow up. Get in the fight. If he wins, his plans are clear and terrifying. That's why this election is about one thing. It's America or Trump. Jimmy Kimmel's already come out with one of the best one-liners on the former guy uh, in 2024, but he is just, th this one's just as good. Nobody knows what he's doing. You can't put two sentences together. Yeah, well, you can. You're about to put two prison sentences together. He's nervous. What'd you do? What'd you do? On Tuesday, April 4th, 2023, Donald Trump entered a Manhattan courtroom and pled not guilty to 34 crimes. Gosha. Before I forget, it is Melania Trump's birthday. And you're thinking, well, where does Melania Trump figure in all of this hush money story? Because she was the one who was giving birth to Baron while Trump was cheating on her with a lady called Karen, but then was cheating on a lady called Karen with a porn star called Stormy. Is that about right? It's weird. Didn't mention that today. Thank you very much, everybody. Appreciate it. Uh, I want to start by wishing my wife, Melania, a very happy birthday. It'd be nice to be with her, but I'm at a courthouse for a rig trial. It's a rig trial. Terrible. But we're doing very well in this rig trial. Everybody knows it. Yes. Get a load of this clown who actually doesn't mention that former guy had time to, well, spend with his lawyer on her birthday. The former president can't even watch Melania blow out her birthday candles. Although the former first lady seems like she skips dessert. Melania. Well, it's Melania's birthday. Let's tell the romantic story of uh, what Trump got up to uh, before the days of sliding into DMs. How they met. Trump has now joined us. How did you two meet? He see me in bride catalog. He like nice fucking titties and then he place order. So they place me in box and ship me to him. When husband open box, he look like creep. I spit and I say to him, you are like Uncle Anton, the fucker of pigs. But then they tell me he have gold. So I get on me and say sorry with tears. I decide he's very charming. I decide I want to be his little piglet. And I want him to love me with real passion. Just like Uncle Anton. Uh, Trump was back in court today and you want to know what went on? All right, give me 60 seconds. So the day started with David Pecker back on the witness stand for his continued lawyers for Trump, trying to poke holes in Pecker's ability to call with accuracy. But at the end, Pecker delivers for the talking about an agreement reached with the FEC and AMI. Within that agreement, AMI admits that the payment made to Karen McDougal for $150,000, that was to influence of the election. Second witness for the 34 years working for the Trump organization, longtime assistant, gatekeeper to Donald Trump. She says she saw Stormy Daniels at Trump Tower and Donald Trump had within his personal contacts on Outlook, both Karen McDougal and Stormy Daniel's contact information. Furthermore, she admitted that her legal fees, two lawyers being paid by Trump organization. The last witness who took the stand was Gary Faro. His direct examination was because he's a banker and he talked about how Michael Cohen came and opened a bank account for Essential Consultants LLC. It's the account that made the payment to Stormy Daniels. No court on Monday. Confession, I'm not really down with all this new got violence. You've got uh, Christy Noem murdering and killing her own pet dog and uh, uh, Nepo Trump wanting to have a punch-up with, well, daddy in law to have a punch-up. Are these people okay? Do they need some therapy? Uh, well, in Noam's case, probably no. She's beyond hope. What a nasty piece of work. Political altercation <laughs> between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. This guy already knows what would happen. It's preposterous. This whole thing is crazy. I About Ms. Noam, the wannabe VP, Ms. Noam, I'll share with you a moment, is disgusting. Just 
disgusting. And she's bragging about it in a book to make money. Please, if you're a pet lover, just leave a message in the comment section aimed firmly at Kirsty Noem because it's just, it's horrible. Dog owners know our furry friends can be a lot to keep up with. But when those tough moments come, you have options. Shooting your dog in the face should not be one of them. And if you do happen to shoot your dog in the face, please don't write about it in your autobiography. He goes to a bodega, they cheer him. He goes to a uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken or whichever, Chick-fil-A, and they cheer him. This man is a hero. And when Donald Trump visits a bodega in Harlem, that's not manufactured either. Whenever he visits a Chick-fil-A in Atlanta, not manufactured. Yeah, fuck you. Yo, fuck you! Fuck up! Fuck. No idea why, but for some strange reason, former guy is not very happy with the temperature inside the corporal. If that explains why none of his family are coming to see him, well, maybe, um, buy them a coat. Don't think that would make any Even, difference, Even, and this was really great this morning, offering nasty jabs after Trump's sweet birthday greetings to Melania. One thing I want to point out, the first thing he did was wish his wife a happy birthday and said he wished he could be with her. She could be there. She could. Any number of his family members could be there at this trial at any point. They've all chosen not to be at this trial. They've chosen not to be. Really, John? Really? That's, that's as good as you can do? Now, it's bad enough for Trump to waste his time in a sham proceeding. Why on earth would he want to punish his family, punish his wife on her birthday? Oh, come sit at the trial. Happy birthday. How ridiculous. And they're keeping me in a courtroom that's freezing, by the way, uh, in a uh, courtroom all day long. Well, it's raining bullshit tonight. It's raining bullshit tonight. So go outside and go back wide. It's raining bullshit tonight. All you ladies and fellas, go grab your umbrellas. Turn them upside down, stick them way up your boats and open it deep inside. Before I forget, well done Jim Acosta for actually sticking to the truth and pointing out some facts. This needs to happen so much more because former guy's been given his daily platform to espout crap. And, so, and you're voting, think... so just to be clear, you're voting for someone who you believe tried to subvert the peaceful transfer of power that can't even achieve his own policies, that lied about the election even after his attorney general told him that the election wasn't stolen and as the former chief law enforcement in this country you're going to vote for someone who is facing 88 criminal counts oh look the 88 criminal counts uh, a lot of those are in my, uh, and i've said even if are, 10 of them are accurate uh, the answer to the question is yes i'm supporting i'm supporting the republican ticket but and can I, you say that you're and, voting and for donald trump because you're not saying his name you just say you're supporting the republican ticket i've said i as between biden and trump i will vote for trump because I feel free to disagree with me, but Bill Barr is just a straightforward coward. Literally, no other description. Name one thing that Biden has done that's worse than that. I think his whole administration uh, is a disaster for the country. Is worse than subverting the peaceful transfer of power? Did he succeed? Only because Vice President Mike Pence stood in the way, and now the yeah. people who are lining he up to be to VP again yeah. say that they will not do what Mike Pence yeah, did. I mean, look, I, I... Go on, place yourself in the shoes of Bill Barr for a moment. What has he got to lose by telling the truth? He responded in response to you saying you'd vote for the Republican ticket. Wow, former AG Bill Barr, who let a lot of great people down by not investigating voter fraud in our country, has just endorsed me for president, despite the fact that I call him, called him weak, slow-moving, lethargic, gutless, and lazy. Based on the fact that I greatly appreciate his wholehearted endorsement, I am removing the word lethargic from my statement. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's classic Trump. Inside Donald Trump's prison cell, the surroundings are like any other small enclosed space. The walls are gray concrete, and a narrow cot with a thin mattress is the only piece of furniture. A tiny metal sink and toilet combo sit in one corner, while a small barred window allows a sliver of natural light to filter in. The sound of clanking bars echoes through the air as guards patrol the hallway outside. What? What? What is... 
President Trump is 76 years old. He will die in federal prison. Trump spends his days pacing the limited floor space. The once powerful man now finds himself in a place of confinement. It is a tricky one. Melania Trump, on her birthday, uh, is feeling humiliated, literally humiliated. And they just wonder, well, what stage is she going to... Well, All right, well, let's bring somewhere. in Stephanie Grisham now. She was the White House press secretary for former President Trump and also the former chief of staff for then First Lady Melania Trump. And Stephanie, you told me that Melania is watching this trial very closely. Obviously, today we heard from Rona Graff, Trump's longtime assistant, who had testified that she had contact information for both Stormy McDaniels and Karen McDougal that she maintained for Donald Trump and that Stormy Daniels had been in Trump Tower and, you know, we heard David Pecker say that Trump had asked him twice about McDougal, calling her, quote unquote, our girl, referring to her as how is Karen? So how does all of this make Melania Trump feel? I mean, some of this, most of this is new information for her. Yeah, absolutely. I'm sure that, you know, exactly what you just said, the fact that he asked about her in the White House, um, the fact that some some White House staff got on the phone with David Pecker to talk about keeping this secret even further. Those were new details to me. And so I know they were new details to her. And I'm sure she's not happy about it. Now, make no mistake, she's not sitting home, you know, crying over this. But, you know, like any woman would be, any married woman or woman in a relationship, it's not fun to hear these details. And I think that the difference between Karen McDougal and Stormy Daniels is that, you know, Karen McDougal hasn't been really out there in the news. She, you know, says they had a year long relationship that they exchanged. I love yous. And, you know, I don't care who you are. That's never going to be fun to hear. No, no, it, 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 it's humiliating um, for sure. Um, and obviously we don't know how closely she is following this, but Anyway, however your weekend turns out, whether you're in mar lago or just at the airport waiting for the plane, um, take a breath. Always take a breath. Seriously, Before he passed away, no, I should be. The last thing he said before he passed away, I mean, literally, we were in the hospital about Hunt and I with him, lying in bed with him. He looked at me and said, I'm not scared, Dad. It's okay. I'm not scared. It's okay. He was gone within. Anyway. Wow. Their husband or wife, whatever it is, or child, worries about will they get that phone call? Will they get that phone call? I got one of those phone calls in a different circumstance. Find out you've lost part of your soul, lost part of your heart. For the entire Syracuse community is grieving, and uh, we're grieving with you. You know, to the men and women in law enforcement here and across the country, you represent the best of us. You really do. It's one of the toughest jobs in America, one of the toughest jobs. And to the families who I hope to get to meet shortly, I say uh, my heart goes out to you. Thank you, and God bless you all. Folks, uh, I want to thank Governor Hochul for having us here today and for her partnership. And thanks to Chuck Schumer, a relentless advocate for this project we, uh, we're here to talk about today. County Executive Mann, it's good to be back in a place that meant so much to me in my life. I also want to thank Governor Little of Idaho and, uh, and, uh, and Boise Mayor McLean for joining us. 
Micron CEO Sanjay, thank you for your leadership and investment in America. We try to entice you a little bit with a couple hundred, you know, billions of dollars, but you can. <laughs> it seemed to work. And to all the union leaders here, including Randy Weingarten, American Federation of Teachers, thank you for showing the world that we can do big things again in America. And all folks all over the years, I've asked business leaders like Sanjay because the other team kept criticizing me for wanting to make these investments, you know, things like the the infrastructure bill, which is over a trillion dollars. And we're going to have — we have an infrastructure decade coming. Last guy had infrastructure week and never showed up. Uh, but, but uh, you know, I asked him — I was told that, you know, this, this is government intervention. I said, sure in hell is. <laughs> I ask every business leader I know. Not a joke. When the federal government makes a multi-billion dollar investment in something, does that encourage you or discourage you from getting engaged? Well, guess what? Every single solitary leader said overwhelmingly, yes, it encourages them to get engaged. And so that's why we're here today. You know, during the pandemic, folks everywhere learned about supply chains. You may remember, we had a global shortage of semiconductors. Smaller than the tip of your finger, and now it's even smaller than that. That would help power everything in our lives, from smartphones to cars to dishwashers, satellites. We invented those chips here in America. We invented them. We made them move. We modernized them. But over time, we stopped — we used to have 40 percent of this market. And over time, we stopped making them. So when the pandemic shut down chip factories overseas, prices of everything went up at here at home. That semiconductor shortage drove one-third of the surge of inflation in 2021, caused long wait lines of all kinds of products. Folks, I determined that I'm never going to let us be vulnerable to wait lines again. If it's essential, we're going to make it here in America. And together, <laughs> and by the way, that's not hyperbole, that's literal. Together with Schumer Leader and I, we took action to make sure these chips are made in America again creating tens of thousands — and I mean tens of thousands — of good-paying jobs, bringing prices down for everyone. In 2022, together with Sh Leader Schumer, we wrote the Chips and Science Act. We used to invest significant amounts of money in research and development. We stopped doing it, but I was determined we were going to do it again. It's one of the most significant science and technology investments in our history. And two months later, I came to Syracuse to celebrate Mike Kahn's historic plan to build the biggest semiconductor manufacturing site in all of America, one of the biggest in the world. As was mentioned, it's the size of — going to be the size of 40 football fields — 40 — big enough to fit four carrier domes inside and still have space left over. Today, I'm pleased to announce we're building on that commitment with a landmark preliminary agreement between my administration and Micron major chip manufacturer, which is building these fabs here in upstate New York. $6.1 billion in chips funding, paired with $125 billion from Micron to build these facilities here in New York and near Micron headquarters in Idaho. And I — you know, by the way, <laughs> it's been mentioned before, it's the single biggest private investment ever in the history of these two states. Idaho and, you know, New York. So far from — not far from here, in Clay, New York, is going to help build two to four manufacturing facilities planned by Micron's Mega Labs. And Boise, Ohio, is going to help build new high-volume manufacturing fabs as well. In all, it's going to create over 70,000 jobs across both states, at least 9,000 of which are construction jobs, 11,000 manufacturing jobs, tens of thousands more up and down the supply chain. And it includes 9,000 permanent Micron manufacturing jobs right here in Clay — not here, but near — in Clay, just a, just a little bit from here. Many of them paying — catch this — $100,000 a year. And it doesn't require a college degree. These projects are governed by the largest project labor agreement in the state's history. It makes one of the — and it makes sure that work is done on time with the highest quality and most significant safety standards. And I'm pleased that Micron is planning to sit down with unions to discuss labor peace. Look, that's not all. 
By the way, I know I get criticized for being the most pro-union president in American history, but guess what? The middle class built this country, and unions built the middle class. These new, brand-new facilities are going to produce the most sophisticated, powerful, leading-edge memory chips in the entire world. Each one has, has trillions — not billions, not millions — trillions of tiny features, each 4,000 times thinner than a single hair on your head. And I got some very thin hair on my head. <laughs> they require manufacturing precision down to the size of an atom. They, possess, they process enormous amounts of information at lightning speed. And they're critical to the emerging technology that will power tomorrow's economy, like artificial intelligence and advanced communication. They'll make everyday things faster, lighter, smaller, and more reliable. <clears throat> and it's about time. Even though America invented these advanced chips, we don't make any of them today. Zero. Zero. All manufacturing of leading-edge chips moved to Asia years ago. That's why today this is such a big deal, and it is a big deal. We're bringing advanced chips manufacturing back to America after 40 years, and it's going to transform our semiconductor industry, a pillar of a modern economy, and it's going to create an entirely new ecosystem in research, design, manufacturing of advanced chips here in America. Folks, where is it written when I said we were going to have the, become the manufacturing capital of the world again when I got elected? They looked at me, some of my friends, and said, you're crazy. Well, where the, he where the heck is it written that American manufacturing can't, will not be the capital of the world again? It's going to be. We've already created eight, nearly 800,000 new manufacturing jobs since I took office. And oh, we're just getting started. And that's a fact. We're just getting started. It isn't just about investing in America. It's about investing in the American people as well. And that includes training folks for these high-paying jobs, highly skilled new jobs that we're creating. To do that, we're bringing employers, unions, community colleges, high schools together, and workforce hubs where folks can learn the skills hands-on. My, my wife, Jill, cares a lot about this as well. She's teaching at a community college right now. Last year, she announced our first five workforce hubs in, in, the, in the United States in Pittsburgh, Phoenix, Baltimore, Columbus, Ohio, and Augusta, Georgia. Thousands of workers will be trained in these facilities. And today, I'm pleased to announce four new hub programs. One hub in Detroit and Lansing, Michigan. Folks will make electric cars. Another hub in Philadelphia. One in Milwaukee will train workers that will replace every, every poisonous lead pipe in America within the decade. And here in Syracuse, the Syracuse region, a new hub is going to train semiconductor workers for the future. And I know that Micron is also partnering with the American Federation of Teachers to develop technology curriculum for high schools in New York State. Think about it, those of you who are as young as me, 40 in your 40s or so. <laughs> how many schools still have shop in them? How many folks have — where you learn how to work with your hands? Well, a significant number of public schools did away with it. So many young people who are qualified and want to and are capable we're going to never know that they have that capacity. Well, I want to thank Randy and Sanjay for their work and Micron's leadership in workforce development, because it's going to make a big difference. In all, so far, my Investing in America agenda has attracted more than $825 billion — $825 billion in private sector investment, not a penny of which existed before I got elected. I ignited a man it ignited a manufacturing boom, a clean energy boom, a semiconductor boom nationwide. And it's clear we have the strongest economy in the world. And that's a fact. 15 million new jobs created in three and a half years. Unemployment has, hasn't been this low for this long for 50 years. Wages are rising. Instead of importing foreign products, we're exporting them and exporting American jobs. We're exporting American products and creating American jobs. Here in America, where they belong. But folks, my predecessor and his MAGA Republican friends have a very different view. 
They oppose the Chips and Science Act that's powering this growth today. In fact, your Congressman Brandon Williams called it corporate welfare. Bless me, Father. <laughs> and Lisa Stefanik, a few counties over, called the CHIPS Act, he said, was Washington at its worst, end of quote. I guess they're not going to be here today to celebrate. <laughs> but now, now, <laughs> conversion is wonderful, isn't it? Now they've seen the massive surge in investment in jobs that we mobilized. And they're singing a different tune now. Now they say this is critical. You got that? Stefanik said this is critical. Now they say what we're doing will, quote, lead to a more prosperous, secure, and innovative America. Well, there's nothing I said like conversion. I agree. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Folks, look, we've got to stop this division. I promise to be president for all of America whether you voted for me or not. Today's investment helps Americans everywhere, in red states and blue states, and proof that we have — we leave no one behind. Of the infrastructure jobs and, pro and proposals, we have more of them in red states than in blue states. It's about America. Let me close with this. The past few years, I've talked to folks all across America, in their communities and at their kitchen tables. They often tell me, back in 2020, they were down. They lost their business. How many did you know somebody worked to carry another facility and a whole generation of work there? And you're sitting there as a parent, and your mom and the kid that comes home, well-educated, says, I can't live here anymore. There's no job for me. I got to move. I got to move. They lost faith. Syracuse is a good example. For decades, decades, it was a manufacturing boom town full of good-paying jobs and a solid path to the middle class. I know. I lived here. I went to law school here. I married a wonderful woman from Lake Skinny Atlas who I came — that's why I came to Syracuse Law School. I felt it. But over the years, trickle-down economics swept it all away. Under my predecessor, manufacturers left. Factories like BCS Automotive over in Auburn, where her family lived, shut down. 22,000 local jobs disappeared in the Syracuse region. That's the story seen in community after community nationwide. Hollowed out, robbed of hope, but not on my watch, thanks to investing we're making in America and the partnerships we formed. America Manufacturing is back. New factories are going up all across the country. And communities like Syracuse are writing a great American comeback story. That's what it is, a comeback story, creating new jobs, new businesses, and new hope. Today, folks, when folks see shovels in the ground in these projects, people going back to work, hope they feel the pride that I feel, pride in their hometowns making a comeback, pride in America, pride in knowing we can get big things done when we work together. That's why I've never been more optimistic about this nation's future. We just have to remember who we are, for God's sake. We're the United States of America, and there's nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity to get done when we work together. God bless you all, and may God protect our troops. This is a big deal day. Congratulations, Syracuse. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.
Distinguished guests, the program has concluded. Those wishing to leave the venue will need to do so immediately to avoid getting held up in road closures. Please proceed to the exits now to avoid any delays. Distinguished guests, the program has concluded those wishing to leave the venue will need to do so immediately to avoid getting held up in road closures. Please proceed to the exits now to avoid any delays.